the true councils of the Catholic Church and the Second Vatican Gathering of Heretics, 26 September, 2024 Anno Domini. Official publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the subject of the true councils of the Divine Institution Roman Catholic Church and the null and utterly invalid Second Vatican quote gathering of heretics unquote, and the proper doctrine of the Holy Apostolic See in regards to this invalid assembly of already excommunicated heretics, enemies of the Church who sold the Bride of Christ to the devil and have forsaken their own clerical offices and dignity, as traitors who have dared to accept the invalid and thus heretical false promulgation of the 1962 Pontifical Romanum by the enemy of the Catholic Church, the Communist Party well-connected Angelo Roncalli, although till then a validly elected Pope John XXIII, he thus became a public heretic and by divine and church law lost the papacy, today's heretics are therefore manifestly visible by not being able to declare this theological, magisterial, and canonical truth. So today, we are trying today uh, to discuss this truth of uh, the dis distinction, and it is theological and canonical distinction, and divinely imposed distinction uh, between the truth of salvation, which is represented by the doctrine of the Church, and obviously declared by the Church, and always has been declared by the Holy Mother Church, by the Holy See, by this Apostolic Holy See, represented, representing the Holy Mother Church today uh, as a sole entity, and obviously as uh, the truth of salvation as it is. We have a little bit of technical difficulties, as you can plainly see, so... But... We are trying to... Uh, virtually run out of time to, in our preparations and so forth, but... That doesn't change the, the, the overall doctrine as it is. And so... We just hope for the good results of this... Uh, uh, today our publication and and to make sure that people understand what is being taught and uh, that it is truly fulfillment of the mission of the church salvation of souls we have some excess but first and foremost we have to establish this doctrine as it is uh, there are many heretics who today uh, most of the world in fact uh, recognizes this novel sort of sect as Catholic, which is horrifying sacrilege and heresy. Because that's a non-Catholic religion that does not have the authority to declare anything, does not have uh, jurisdiction in the, Holy, in the Church, does not belong to the Holy Mother Church, is outside the Roman Catholic Church, and therefore all those who belong to this horrible sect of Satan, which is truly was established by the enemies of the Church, by the devil himself and his henchmen, who manifestly is manifestly visible that they don't possess the fear of god because otherwise they would fear god's punishment if they establish such a fraudulent and neo-protestant apostate sect a choice sect of satan sect of the devil and so the devil is using these henchmen to disprove the church and to destroy the really the chance of salvation of those who may hear the truth who may hear and God may grant them the, the spirit of understanding, the, the grace of understanding, to understand that what we teach is the truth of salvation, that they have to convert to it for the sake of their soul, and to uh, repair to this holy apostolic see, and that we have not asked for this office, that we, but we do, do know by divine revelation and, and infused knowledge, which is supernatural uh, really work of God, that God puts us here, and grant us, he was the one who secured us the Episcopal consecration, who has done this at the last moment, truly at the last moment when it was possible, otherwise there would be a heresy, if there was no Pope, there would be a heresy itself. And a non-Catholic sect does not possess, does not, not that cannot possess, does not possess the keys to the Kingdom of Heaven. They cannot assemble in valleys conclave and start electing one of their own, one of their own, to the papacy because that's completely invalid 
the church law reflects that that's canon 188 for number four that uh, surely the canons of the council of trends but surely the canon uh, on sacraments and so forth where that's how this, this horrible sect began by attacking the sacraments in 1962 on a domini prior to them attempting to assemble in the council and those who were true to god but have betrayed god by giving consent even by their silence to this promulgation of what roncalli did promulgation in the pontificale romanum and we have shown this so many times uh let's move this unfortunately we have like we said we have technical difficulties because we ran out of time in our preparations it was a very busy morning and so we are not excusing ourselves it's there's no excuse but we are just explaining the situation as it is so you have to get the this is the council of trent and we have shown this so many times but this is for the first for the people who come for the first time to see this this is precisely why Ron Kali, john 23rd andrew Ron Kali ceased to be john 23rd this canon 13 session 7 of council of trent because Ron Kali dared to impose on the church heretical and therefore null pontificale romanum book of ceremonies that that was in early 1962 at the end of february 1962 he signed that that's what it looks like so far we have the information and we have the picture that's why the is in the quran that's mountain every six past and ministers uh vatican council that's sanborn that's cum example status officio these are the people as from Chicago. These are the people from the heretics, said by Council Heretic. These are the people that are forbidden that their election to papacy is null, automatically by church law. That's reflected in on uh Apostolatus Officio. It's actually worth to, to read it. Because we have the original Latin in the Bularum Romanum that was republished by Pope Pius the Ninth. Uh but it's point number six in it and this valid and perpetuated that's why it's called cumex apostolatus officio with our apostolic office if ever at any time it shall appear that any bishop even if he be acting as an archbishop patriarch or primate or any cardinal of the aforesaid roman church or as has already been mentioned any legate or even the roman pontiff prior to his promotion or his elevation as cardinal or roman pontiff has deviated from the catholic faith or fallen into some heresy the promotion or elevation even if even if it shall have been uncontested and by the unanimous assent of all the cardinals shall be null void and worthless even if all those who are cardinals who have given consent even then it is null void and worthless it shall not be possible for it to acquire validity nor for it to be said that it has thus acquired validity through the acceptance of the office of consecration of subsequent authority nor through position of administration nor through the punitive enthronement of a roman pontiff or veneration or obedience accorded to such by all nor through the lapse of any period of time in a foregoing situation that excludes completely the novus auto sect this is so important as paul the fourth in our process of blessed memory uh, in 1559 anno domini you can read the notation there about the novice of the sect. Novice of the sect does not have authority to assemble. They are autom- automatically excommunicated. Canon 2314 severs them by way of heresy and apostasy. In fact, that's what this new religion is. And how to recognize it is manifestly visible, publicly visible, where in their in, in, in their gatherings, in their assemblies, because they have Protestant table in the in their this is thus desecrated churches that desecrates the church that's the canon law uh, that's godless ceremony this is completely opposed to the holy sacrifice of mass it's truly heretical because it's not showing the death of the lord as saint paul declares in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 27 and so forth in that area so let a man eat the bread and drink the chalice because by by doing so and so forth he, uh, he will show the death of the Lord until he come which means sacrifice of the cross of Calvary which is the the holy sacrifice of the mass is a reenactment of the same 
which is the Tridentine Mass. So if they attempt to do something else, as Montini has six Protestant ministers, that's the picture right here. Well, that's a little bit further. Uh, we have shown this already, so that's right here. That's Montini, six Protestant ministers. Montini is on the right. Montini was never valid Pope of the Church because by then they lost the papacy, and they cannot assemble. That they by giving consent to what their own colleague did to the sacraments, which he excommunicated himself by that very Canon 13, Session 7 on Canon uh, Council of Trent on sacraments in general. It was a papacy. This is it right here. That's the distinction. So because they impose hands on top of the head of the Bishop, like in the, that's one of the examples. We have not, we don't have the capacity to go through the whole book. We have both books, the valid Pontificale Romanum, which we use, the blessing of holy oils and all the reserves and so forth on, on, uh, um, Fairy of uh, Five on Holy Thursday and uh, and Holy Week and so we do it we use it every year um, our copy is from 1891 Pontificar Romanum so it's, it's, it's true valid and still there were some notations in there already because we got it used and it was very hard to obtain but some notations and scratches and so forth we had to we had to uh, make sure that it's all correct it is correct now what the Roncalli published that's on the right hand side we have that book also on the left hand side that's our Pontificar Romanum on the left hand on the right hand side that's what Roncalli published and this is the difference that he changed the sacrament of all the orders Episcopal consecration and at the essential moment he makes those three bishops take turns and he it says that's the translation is right here that was it published by Society of Pius X, the Heretics Assembly of Heretics, not valid order of the Church, and it says this is done in turn. That's the essential moment where the Episcopal consecration is conferred by three bishops. One suffices for validity; they take in turns. That's not possible to be done because that's called what is called indelible character on the soul of that person being consecrated bishop, and that's how Rocali wanted to destroy because he had Communist Party connections. That's how one, he wanted to cut off the apostolic succession, which is by far the worst kind of attack against the church than anything else that they declared afterwards in that Second Vatican gathering of heretics. Anything else. Because this is much more important, because without it, there's no bishops. And with that change, there's no bishops and no priests, which is by far the worst. So only thing that remains is their heresies, and that's it. So whomsoever was consecrated in that new rite, and then Montini changed it, we have shown those pictures that's um, right here uh, right here yes he changed and he published two heresies in Episcopal consecration ceremony alone which is uh, one of them is actually contradicting the dogma of the church that the Holy Ghost proceeds from God the Father God the Son we have gone through all this before in our publications this is more Montini the, the miracles by how he obtained the destroy work of God our Lord point us to the right book and that we were in Ireland, in Manute, Ireland, in their library, in that formerly Catholic seminary. And we have that was the only place they had it on that on that island that we needed it in English for the purpose of recording. So that was the only translation there was. It was coincidentally published in, the book was published in Minnesota. Documents on liturgy from 1960. It's listed there. Have written there 1963 to 1978 so Montini is listed there the 1600 pages roughly plus minus book and we open it on that exact page by the grace of God we never seen this book before and we came to the library and didn't even know what we are looking for we didn't have the title nothing and several there were five uh, stories of uh, a full of books, five uh, story building, and so we got to uh, uh, third or fourth floor, and uh, got off the elevator and went around the corner. Didn't know what we were looking for, just randomly just go, and then all of a sudden we were in front of the in the aisle, turned to the right in the aisle, and then all of a sudden, like it was invisible force turn us this way 
and there it was in front of our eyes, right there, documents on LSDG. And so we took the book, opened it, page 800 something, 819 something, and that's where this page was. What you see, what you see on, on, the, on this, that's what it was. Precisely what we're looking for, change of sacraments, what Montini did to sacrament of all the orders, uh, he didn't change much the uh, ordination to the diaconate, but priesthood, and most importantly, episcopate, because that's how everything else, because it's done by the bishop, they wanted to destroy the episcopal power of the church. That means cut off the apostolic succession. That's what the Roncalli started in 1962, by imposing on, on the church this, and that's how he severed himself by that. It says there, so we'll go back to what the society is supposed to stand. So this, you, you can see that it says, this is the original, this is the true right. It says, that's an English translation that was approved by Rome to be published, or publishing by the order of Archbishop of New York, uh, Archbishop uh, Michael Augustine Cargan, uh, in that, at that year, 1896. So he applied for permission from Rome to have it published one page, in Latin, the original Latin, and the other in English translation. So it'll be, it's very valuable because it shows how it's done. This is the this is the right of Episcopal consecration. The whole ceremony is there translated, and so it's it's exact translation. So it says, "Does the uh, then the consecrator when the litany is litany is finished, then the consecrator and the assistant bishops touch with both hands the head of the one to be consecrated, saying, receive the Holy Ghost.' That's the essential form. It says down there." Where it's marked, where it's highlighted, the imposition of hands with prayer is the essential right by which episcopal power is conferred. What Ron Kali did, he makes them take turns. And that's right here, it says successiva in Latin on the right hand side. Make it bigger even. See, it says successiva right there, where the arrow is. And uh, on the left hand side, that's the Latin, it says at, that means and. So the translation is correct. So he made them take, take turn and the translation of that's from succession past the tenth it says this is done in turn but that's cannot that can't be done that's a sacrilege because you cannot uh, administer that sacrament again because what it gives is indelible char character on the soul of the one who being consecrated the bishop receives that mark from god it's a supernatural mark on the soul of that of that person who is be, re, being consecrated as bishop that's why it's called consecration, not ordination, but consecration. That means setting aside for holy purpose. And when they did that, Roncalli severed himself from the papacy, because that's a heresy. That's that's a horrifying sacrilege, attack on this apostolic succession of, of the church. He he's burning in hell because they cannot absolve themselves. They don't. They lost everything, and home service remained with them and didn't disclose this to the faithful to stay away from such heretics, enemies of the church. Including Archbishop Lefebvre, including Bishop de Castromayor, including Archbishop Ngo. Uh, if that was even him, we don't even know that's the serious doubt who that was, because what he did was kind of horrifying things he committed. Uh, that's the set of contest side, but the excerpt it will show that the novel is self evident now by the fact what these people have done, that there's just no reconciliation possible uh, of what they have done. So we wanted to show this in, in these pictures so that there's no mistake that a council can only be convoked and it, its decree is promulgated by a valid pope. So if the pope dies during a council, valid council, then that council is suspended and has to be reconvened by the successor. Of course, Heretics cannot assemble in valid council of the church and cannot declare any any documents. Nothing is promulgated. Nothing is valid, and so forth. So the Vatican Council under the Pope Pius uh, the Ninth in eighteen sixty nine to eighteen seventy. Now we have to look it up by this because so many. No, oh, this is the Missal Romanum. We'll leave that in there. Uh, we will show that. But this is from the Vatican Council. But what Pius IX did, because they were already, uh, the, the history is very, very important to, to understand. There were already troops of the revolutionaries who hated the church because by then, uh, 
Italy was papal state. Pius the Ninth was the last uh, king of Italy in the papal sense that he was the first, last pope who was truly the ruler of the whole state of Italy, kingdom of Italy. And so he had to leave. That was evidently the devil himself in these revolutionaries, in these enemies of the church. And maybe perhaps they were already Marxists, we don't know, but that's because Marx manifesto was 1848, so this was afterwards. And it was not coincidental it was during that, the, the council. And so uh, the Holy Ghost, obviously, that's our conclusion on the subject. The, the Holy Ghost instructed the church to promulgate the decrees of the sessions so that they would be protected and so they are promulgated. So all this, the decrees of the Vatican Council, and we don't have access, people have to understand that we do not have access to confirm uh, exactly what uh, what the circumstances were back then to our um, archives in the Vatican because that's occupied by non-Catholic sect and obviously we are in our exile so we rely only on these Inform on this information, and obviously the novus or the sect cannot be trusted with disclosure of the truth. Obviously, uh, or they may have fabricated things, and we don't we don't go to such places to seek the truth. Obviously, and it's immaterial at this point. But that because of the video excerpt, we want to make sure that this is understood prior to when we play. So we will go to that, and then we address some other points. Uh, God willing, everything goes well today in this our publication. Rogelio del Rosario Martinez from the Philippines, formerly novice ordo apostate sectarian and then heretic of the quote charismatic sect, unquote, and one time a member of a Baptist quote Bible study sect, unquote, a truly scandalous display of anti Catholic evil, the novice ordo apostate sect involvement likely, a layman imposter and not a valid true pope a visible lack of clarity and truth and thus without the supernatural guidance of the Holy Ghost. I've got a question uh, about liturgy um, now, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. That's your, your coronation liturgy, which yet again um, I watched. I noticed you were using the Masale Romanum Editio Typica 19... 62. 62. The yes, 62 yes. Missal, of course, being promulgated by Pope St. John Paul, uh, 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 yes, John yes. XXIII. Yes. Have you, since becoming Pope, um, promulgated this yourself? Because, of course, from your position, this Missal would be a Missal promulgated by an, a false Pope. Uh, in the first place, let us remember it was not uh, John the Twenty Third who promulgated that missal. It was uh, Pius the Pip who promulgated that the uh, missal, and according to him, the mass must not be changed. Yes, I'm aware it's 1962, but. Uh, mm. As of now, here in the Philippines, other uh, missiles are not available. So, okay, so it, yeah. so it, it, yeah. it's purely a matter of providing availability for the faithful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, do you? So, there are there are some um, set of Acantis groups, for example, who would refuse to use the nineteen sixty two because it is promulgated by a false pope and because so this is not exactly true we don't know who these people are who investigate uh, who are interviewing this imposter but we suspect that they are also connected with the nose of the sect that's a distasteful thing that you can see the video that's from his own so-called coronation this is a fairly good sized church where these people get the money we don't know uh, it's, uh, he had connections to the, he even admitted that he was, he had connection with the Novus Ordo sect, he was even consecrated by them, so-called. So, it, this is a complete fabrication, and then the charismatic 
sect and a Bible study. He was it's listed. That's in his official biography. We're not making this up. Uh, anyone who attempts to claim that they have obtained their election to any office of the church, such exalt, exalted office to, of the church by assembly of laymen or someone who claims to be cardinals, such elections now because we don't have any true cardinals and that election to the papacy is reserved to solely and only the true cardinals. Cardinals are named by the true pope. Heretics are therefore excluded. That's uh, Vacantis Apostolica Aesthetics of Pius the, Pius the 12. We have it, we have the picture somewhere, but this is live stream, so we don't know if we will be able to find it right away. But uh, it's uh, that's such an important apostolic constitution because uh, it protects the papacy. Protects the papacy from intrusion of uh, of heretics. Let me find it. So, uh, it's right here. Vacantis apostolicae series, uh, and that's point number thirty six. Um, let's move it a little bit. No, let's go there. Okay, so it says. Uh, that's from 1945, Pius XII, our process of blessed memory. Point number 36, cardinals canonically deposed or who have renounced their canonical dignity upon consent of the Roman pontiff have no right to an election. Even more, when the see is vacant in the sacred college, that is cardinals, cannot restore to, the form, to their former state the cardinals deprived of the right by the Pope or deposed, nor can they go to the voting, indeed, they cannot go to vote for the Pope, they cannot be present at the conclave. That excludes all heretics, because can canonically deposed means those who are deprived of the like, office of cardinal, which includes Canon 188 point number four, and we have shown that. Uh, that's right here. Office of the colleague becomes vacant by way of tacit resignation. At by the force of law, if so, you're right. It says. Um, if so facto, automatic loss of office, by the very fact, the, there's eight points in there, uh, uh, without any declaration, sine ula declaratione, it says in the Latin, that's the center in that, uh, in Chicago, that's from the original Latin publication of the canon law, of the 1917 Court of Canon Law, if a cleric, has public point number four says has publicly defected from the Catholic faith. If he becomes public heretic, he loses automatically the clerical office. That includes the Pope. The Pope ceases to be Pope even he enters by divine law first and foremost. By divine law, the possessor of the keys to the kingdom of heaven loses the keys. If he becomes public heretic, that was the case of Roncalli. By the very fact that this canon law is protecting the church, there's no intrusion of heretic on the on the on, onto the seat of Saint Peter. That means the papacy. They cannot assemble in valid conclave. They cannot start electing, and they cannot elect one of their own. Even if they assemble anything, heretics cannot validly assemble in, assemble in conclave. So, any layman uh, assembly is absolutely null because they don't have the authority to elect the pope. That has to be true cardinals. Cardinals are named by true pope. If that, if r r that's how Ron Cali was, the papacy was about the pontifical Romanum. These people are not explaining this. At all, because because how could they? They don't belong to the church. They are outside the church. So obviously they don't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost to to teach the truth. So this person on on the, that video, that's his supposed coronation. You can see that Missa Romanum, and uh, that's that's the 1962. He says so. Uh, what he is asked by that person is, uh, he says that that was Pius the Twelfth who promulgated. No, that was not Pius the Twelfth. That was Roncalli who promulgated. That's right here. We have the copy of it, and it says so. Uh, that's the Missa Romano from 1962. 
to make it bigger. We have it in, the, in that video, but it's be included in the video. But we wanted to show this. So it says, Nova Rubricum Corpore Assumo Pontifice Ioane Motu Proprio Rubricarum Instructum Die Iuli Anno. So it's 1960. Approved of what was there. So he gave the uh, motto proprio to uh, to begin in 1965. It says uh, John 23rd right here. So no past the 12. No, he didn't give the instruction. But this was promulgated. The but uh, it was promulgated right here. 23 of June 1962. So that's where the that's part of the missile. This is the missile itself. So obviously that was after after the um, the Pontificar Romanum, which was promulgated at the end of um, February of 1962. So prior, that means that's how. So chronologically. Ronkai didn't have a, the papacy when he attempted to promulgate this uh, this uh, Missile Romano, which this heretic is using. That's on the altar right there, right next to our head, right there. That's red, the red book. That's the, that's the Missile Romano, which the, the, we were showing our missile in that video, in that excerpt. Uh, that, that looks different. So that's evident that that's, that's, so that's invalid missile. This person is not instructed by the Holy Ghost. That that's that's something that cannot be used because, and moreover, there are substantial changes to that. He said he doesn't think that that's that's important. It is important when he when Ronkai added Saint Joseph to the canon of the Mass. That substantially changed uh, Mass, and there are changes in the uh, uh, in the Easter Vigil Mass when they take the and some other changes. There are several changes that they changed. They look like minor, but they are substantial changes to the that's not canon law says that you have to adhere to the rubrics as they are. So they are the mass is protected by crop premium that cannot be changed the, by Council of Trent. So these are new ceremonies in that Missile Romanum. Moreover, that's invalid Missile Romanum because Ronkai didn't lost that authority to change and plus he wouldn't have the authority to change it so substantially. He would still sever himself from papacy by doing that. So this person is using something that the church never approved. And by then, Roncalli was the papacy. And so on that fact, there's no such thing as declaring that there was a second, we call it Second Vatican Gathering of Heretics. In the history of the church, there was only one council of the Vatican that was under Pope Pius IX, our predecessor of blessed memory. So therefore, by apostolic authority, we declare, therefore, under the pain of excommunication, if anyone teaches or declares or uh, say, says to the contrary and tries to refute this, our doctrine, that in the history, if anyone said that uh, or denies that there was never Second Vatican Council of the Church in the history of the Ch Roman Catholic Church, let him be an anathema, therefore, because that's, that's, a, that's a complete lie. Now, it's highly unlikely there will be another Council of Vatican, but that would be if that was we we had the chance to go and to be in the Vatican, uh, we called the Council. That would be the Second Vatican Council of the, of the Church, but not what these heretics have assembled into. That's absolutely null. So we will let it play and show the discrepancies, uh, including the rest of it. What he says. Prayers have been changed, feasts have been removed, so on and so forth. What do you say to these set of acantists then? So this is the, what we have just shown, Missar Romanum. We have to pause. Uh, we, we put it in this in this video, but that's evident that he they are lying. That, it's just not not the truth and uh, 
So the person is asking, what would you say to these sort of a contest? Uh, um, we'll hear the answer. So words still not refuse to use such a um, such a uh, liturgical book. And the first place, I'm endorsing the 1955 uh, Misal. Uh, that should be the one uh, we should uh, use in our uh, liturgy. But uh, of course, if uh, the 1955 would not be available, then um, you can use the 1962. Okay. Only. So that that's that's why he doesn't see the 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 problem with it. No, you cannot use the 1962. Anyone who uses the 1962 is not saying the valid mass. The mass is invalid, so it's not pr approved by the church. Moreover, the changes to the, the substantial change, it is substantial change to the missile, and therefore that destroys their, their ordinations to priesthood because that's a defect of intention during their ordinations because they are not ordaining people to say the Catholic Mass. And this contains changes. That they are things that were removed by Ron Cairo. They removed things out of there and changed the... Uh, it's, it's a new right in that sense because that has to be strictly adhered to what, what the Church has always used. What he says about the 1955, well... We know there are a lot of people with a lot of opinions, but this is not a valid opinion. And it's just an opinion. That person is not a pope. He doesn't have any authority to declare this. He's part of the numbers of the sect. We suspect that this sect has, because they saw, that obviously they are in on it, that Bergoglio and the Vatican is doing these, these kind of horrible things and publishing all kinds of heretical apostate abominations that uh, have become too much of a scandal. So they instruct some of these this is what they what they call themselves uh, controlled opposition the person who goes and starts claiming that he's he was elected by by layman, layman uh and, and poor philippines he has the money to fly all the way to europe to vienna and to let himself elected by we don't know by whom but they are certainly not cardinals so that's invalid and uh, so Humanly speaking, and this is what people don't understand. At this point, the doctrine that is, has to be obeyed, it's just, there's no way around it, there's no compromise possible. Humanly speaking, the election of a pope, of a valid pope, is impossible because there are no more true cardinals. The noble sort of sect does not have valid cardinals of the church. They do not have office of the cardinals. So they cannot validly assemble in conclave and start electing one of their own to the papacy. Moreover, this, this is apostate sect. It's a fraudulent, it's a false religion. It doesn't have uh, any authority in the church because they are excommunicated. That's why we put that canon 2314 right next to his head because it's, it's, that's evident that excommunicated heretics, apostate sect, neo-Protestant sect with communist connections does not have authority to do anything in the church. He's not saying that. He was part of it. So he's excommunicated himself, so he cannot restore himself to anything. He doesn't have anything in the church. That's why he allowed the, he had glass table there pretending that that's altar in this place of assembly. Uh, and, uh, so he's got 200 people there. He sat in our place. This is complete fraud, complete fraud. And by the very fact that this person doesn't have the guidance of the Holy Ghost to declare the truth, he's disseminating these falsehoods and so forth. He just said that that missile, 1962 missile, could be used if they don't have the 1955 version. 1955 was most certainly introduced by behind the back of Pius XII because the change of the uh, Holy Week, uh, because Pius XII was very ill, they have done things behind his back. He condemned the whole 
idea, whole principle in his encyclical. Forgotten the name of it. Um, well, we don't recall our memory doesn't suffer, but it's easily found. Uh, it, you can find it easily. Uh, Money generates. Uh, uh, we have forgotten truly right now. It slipped our mind. But he condemned the whole idea uh, to go back to what the church have used before, before the changes and in public doctrine was in, uh, uh, introduced and promulgated and so forth. So to and obviously you cannot be using a liturgy that was not truly promulgated by the Pope and it was uh, secretly introduced by the enemies of the church behind his back and pretended that he signed it or something like that. So these changes, no, that there's no change to we have, uh, moreover, it's inconceivable that Pastor 12 would do this because he would uh, truly endanger his eternal salvation by, by this. So this, the changes to the liturgy for the Holy Week, the change of the Holy Week ceremonies, cutting off the the prophecies uh, is the vigil mass, for example, at midnight. The only thing he approved that we have concluded as, as valid and we using it, and we have imposed this on the church, as it is, although there's very few that remain with the church, uh, is the midnight mass for Easter vigil. Because that's how it was in the beginning, as returning to it as a matter of church discipline, liturgical discipline, which we have the authority to change, to go back. So we don't have to change because that's what he did, past the 12. He was petitioned and he agreed to it and he, he put it back where it was. Because before that, that was Holy, uh, about Holy Saturday, uh, uh, was the Mass was set for Easter Vigil was set uh, during the day in the morning. Uh, and that the reason was maybe the the reason of missionary countries and so forth to be able to say the mass at all and sometimes the priests had to say it and and during their travels and so forth so it was it was very very difficult so um and to to do the all the ceremonies because that's a long long ceremony obviously blessing of the Pascal candle and all this and holy water and so it's 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 a it's a very long ceremony very demanding and so there was 12 there are 12 prophecies they got it down to you know seven five something like that so but that's inconceivable that he would approve to approve it and we, we don't accept any of this that he has done so but the difficulty is really truly how to find the truth because we don't have access to the Vatican archives. We don't know if we don't even know if it was still there any such information. But we cannot accept it that he was at twelve did something like this. Now because he would truly sever himself from the chance of salvation, because that's that's a horrible thing to do to cut the mass and all this. Plus that mass is protected by quo primum. So there cannot be changes like this substantial. To blame it on Pius the twelve that he changed it. And to say, as this heretic, this heretic says that an imposter, obviously, says that it's okay to have, that he accepts, he proposes the 1955. So uh, that means the changes. So it has to be before that, obviously. And even that has to be taken very carefully because, because there were initial changes in different countries, perhaps different, they were far, further advanced. They had more people inside the enemies, communists, agents, and so forth, pretending to be priests and bishops and so forth. So it was this orchestrated attack. So obviously they could push through whatever they deemed necessary. They controlled the, 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 the country more and it was not possible to keep an eye on it. And some, it's, it's, they were already inside. So we don't know the extent of that time, how far they got but it's self-evident that things were changed right after and then past the 12 died in 1958 it became so it went so fast that it's just it's, and they wanted to obtain the papacy so they could force it upon others by that apostolic office 
but people didn't realize and how is it possible that they didn't accept that they did accept these changes but on Kali posted in the church which are invalid because you cannot change the sacraments Council of Trent protects them because of the Protestant revolt and so there's no such thing as Second Vatican whatever there's no such council of the church it's only Second Vatican gathering of heretics because by the very fact that they gave consent to these changes they became heretics they lost their kaiko offices and that's how the church ended up in the catacombs again that was an attack of the devil so this enemy of the church this imposter connected with the novice of the sect and with these horrible things that he does uh, and his predecessor and, and, and the rest of them and he allows himself to be consecrated by by we don't even know who that is uh, either the charismatic sect or, or whoever it, it's uh, it's preposterous it's not valid because by the very fact what their places of assembly look like you can safely say whether that person is Catholic or not there has to be a cross in front face of the altar if there is no cross there is no mass and there is no priesthood period because the, cro the, the altar represents the cross of Calvary during the holy sacrifice of the mass if there is Protestant table, the nobles of the table in that place, that place is desecrated. When you see the table and you go in there, or it's run by this nobles of the sect, or anyone who is connected with that sect, turn around, walk away, never come back. That place is desecrated, the devil dwells there, God will not come, and he will commit more to sin, even to say so much as one prayer in that place. And God is offended. So we will let's finish this um, this video. There are only few changes that is inserted there. One is uh, the name of uh, Saint Joseph in the canon, endorsed by uh, John the Twenty Third. Mm. But uh, I guess the rest uh, are okay. So my question is. In the near time future, uh, your plans, Your Holiness, are you willing to convoke an ecumenical council to address the the issues of the modern world? Or yes, mm. actually, I'm uh, in my mind, and actually, it's in my uh, agenda to um, declare uh, Second Vatican Council void, null and void. I see. That's my uh, first uh, uh, agenda. To declare the Second Vatican Council null and void. Would you, uh, I have I've kind of an interesting question because to my, uh, to my understanding, the first agenda of the Second Vatican Council was actually closing or ending the First Vatican Council because due to all of the political issues, the First Vatican Council was never officially closed. So uh, would that be a uh, something that would be uh, done in your papacy? Because it seems like Vatican I for you would still be open uh, right now, not have been closed off yet. Yes, that must be closed. And uh, of course, as I said, uh, I will declare a Second Vatican Council null and void. Uh, uh, this, is, this is preposterous. That's just not, not possible to be done. We have tried to uh, show the... Um, oh, there it is. Okay, so it's there. Um, we will show the, uh, uh, the decrees of the Vatican Council. That's right here. Let's fix it. Um, it, it is... Um, This is such an important book because it shows precisely that uh, the council was, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger like this, uh, just bear with us because this is, this is important and we have to get it ready. Okay, so. This is the only digital form that we don't have the book 
as it is so it's very hard to um devil doesn't want this to be published so unfortunately we don't have it it's freezing upon us um This was, um, okay, there it is. All right, so, this is the forward for, um, you have to make sure that this is, it, it's freezing up on us. The devil is sabotaging the uh, the publication as it is. And we have these difficulties. Every time we want to publish something that is important, that evil spirit is sabotaging our efforts so that people who want to learn the truth uh, are deprived of it, unfortunately. So our laptop is... slowing down all of a sudden it's not reacting it's refreshing it's very obvious place because this is this is this is far too important to to get published and so forth and uh, it's self-evident that uh, there's something going on here that is nefarious um, And uh, unfortunately, these kind of difficulties now and then arise because when we do these uh, recordings and uh, try to uh, publish it, there are these kind of difficulties. Now we see it. Okay, so uh, 41, for example. Uh, see what happens okay so uh, this is the um, constitution on the on the church yeah this is it's exactly the devil is sabotaging our publication today I think it's frozen up on us so that we wouldn't be able to publish what we need. So we apologize for these difficulties, but unfortunately, that's the evil spirit hates the church and he doesn't want the church to continue. And we have these difficulties every time we need to do something. We want to do something substantial. And this is this is the time. And unfortunately, we have to deal with this. And But the, the fact that they were promulgated, those degrees were promulgated at that time of the, it's right here, finally started moving. So, um, okay, we have to get to the first page of this, uh, of this constitution. Uh, for former government established Christ and, uh, okay. it's uh, very important to read these documents because they are completely destroying um, what this Novosoto sect has imposed on on those who claim to be Catholic and of, of, it's just not Catholic what they are imposing and uh, so it's just preposterous. Unfortunately, we would like to publish this with the entirety, and unfortunately, this thing is just not cooperating. Okay, so right here. Okay, first dogmatic constitution on the Church. Christ promulgated 
so the word promulgated means as in italic promulgated um, in the fourth section of the holy, holy ecumenical council uh vatican council pious as pious the ninth so he was present obviously when it's promulgated that means that it is concluded that doctrine is there for people to obey so just because that council didn't end an official with official decree those decrees of the of conclusion of the council doesn't mean that that council is didn't issue it in fall with doctrine and uh, it produced actually the dogma of infallibility and it's just it's just absolutely preposterous to insinuate that somehow this would have to be caused. On the other hand, what this heretic was saying is uh, that it, the the Second Vatican gathering of heretics would have to be uh, declared now, but that doesn't need to be because that was never the valid council of the Church. That's to prove that he doesn't understand, doesn't have the 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 guidance of the Holy Ghost is not with this person because otherwise he would know that this is something that is not possible to be done so we're just going through all this um, and this is the doctrine that destroys the Vacantism right here we have dealt with this so many times uh, that which the Prince of Shepherds and Great Shepherd of the Sheep Jesus Christ our Lord establishing the person of the blessed apostle Peter must by the same uh, for, uh, for, uh, to secure the perpetual welfare lasting good of the church must by the same institution necessarily remain unceasingly in the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven must be exercised by physical person of the Pope otherwise there's no keys which Christ our Lord promised, and he promised to be with his church all days, even unto the consummation of the world. If anyone teaches otherwise, he's a heretic outside the church, denies this in public doctrine. That's all the set of are like this. So that's why this this is such an important doctrine. Can raise the least precise and so forth. And then it goes further because it the next page is the canon. And um, if then anyone shall say that it is not by the institution of Christ the Lord, but by divine right that Blessed Peter has a perpetual line of successors in the primacy of the universe of the church, or that the Roman Pontiff is not a successor of the Blessed Peter in this primacy, let him be anathema, that means cursed, excommunicated, outside the church, on the way to hell. Now there is, has to be a Roman Pontiff to exercise the keys to the Kingdom of Heaven, to, to have the uh, doctrine of the Church enhanced, to be able to declare the, the uh, fulfill the mission of the Church, which is salvation of souls. Uh, and so there is no no set of accountism because that's impossible to exist because Church law forbids that. And this doctrine, this is infallible doctrine, this papacy is the feeder, destroys that. So then the previous article is, uh, is touching on the, to go back a little bit, on the, uh, still on the um, doctrine of the faith. So, and that's signed signed by the secretary to the council so it's approved so this is the <laughs> this is the proof that there's no okay so this is right here wherefore when he entered into his glory he prayed in uh, the, the father not, uh, not for the apostles only but for those also who through their preaching should come to believe in him that all might be one, even as he, the Son, and the Father are one. As then he sent the apostles, whom he had chosen to himself from the world, as he himself has been sent by the Father, 
So he wills that there should ever be pastors and teachers in his church to the end of the world. Where is, where is the cervicantism then? So, uh, promulgated again. This is, this is such an important doctrine and people are denying it because they either fit into the camp of the Cervicantus heretics. That's why Cervicantism is heresy. We have declared so. And that's why these heretics who belong to the Novus Ordo sect, they are outside the church. They don't realize that the sect does not have authority to elect the Pope, does not have authority in the church, does not belong with the church, and is completely on the way to hell. That's a semi protestant heresy. And... Obviously, it's not possible to, to accept it. So, at the end, we would like to admonish those who strive to become truly Catholic. That the only way to be Catholic is to be reconciled with the Church, to observe the heresies, to be accepted by the Holy Mother Church, of which today, because of the general apostasy in this, in this world, the, the Holy Apostolic See of Rome today in exile is the only... A place where the faith is held and where the church exists and God permitted this to happen because of heresy because of apostasy because how people are to him how they treat Christ our Lord and how they deny his the Catholic faith which is nothing else but Catholic tradition how they have itching ears as St. Paul puts it have uh, concluded to themselves uh, false teachers who teach them heresies and lead them to hell. That means the sect of these her or these heretics of these fraudulent uh, assemblies of heretics, which is not, they are not church orders. They were never approved by the church, like this so-called society in past the tenth, or this uh, society in past the fifth, or this so-called resistance, or any other entity assembly that is uh, connected with them. Even those who claim the name of the order that was approved by the church, the traditional orders and so forth. And of course the Servicantus heretics. And so there's no no reconciliation of this. We apologize for the technical difficulties of the, as it is, but this presentation of what this heretic was, and he's claiming the papacy he doesn't possess it, we explained why it is so, that humanly speaking, to elect the Pope is impossible because there are no true cardinals. And he does not have authority to name cardinals. He is not a pope. He's not so much as a valid priest. God preserved the uh, the papacy in our person and preserved for us the episcopal consecration. And it was Him who consecrated us through the hands of one person only. That was Bernard Pillay. And Bernard Pillay doesn't even know about it, or we doubt that he knew about it. Because how could he? That he is just instrument of, of the devil as a horrible heretic. And so, so then at the end, in closing, we would like to point to the fact that uh, we have not asked for this office and God is helping us to survive because otherwise that would be extremely difficult if we didn't have the divine help. We would not be here speaking to people who may watch this because it would be dead of hunger, no place to say the Mass. We say the Mass every day. We are a very humble uh, place, very poor. We don't have, at this point, any donations as it is, only that God supplies us with, uh, He forces those who are around us to supply us with, with food. So it's truly the help of our Lord as He promised to be with His church. So if we were imposters, we, imposter, we would not have that kind of assistance. And it's truly miraculous, it's truly this, this way. We don't have people that will come here to, to Mass, only our servant, and that's it. Because People don't want to convert. The devil holds them hostage. That's the main sign that the devil persecutes the church. And and uh, therefore, uh, he uh, is uh, trying to destroy the church so that there will be no chance of salvation. Um, so, I just want to put this in here. And this is final conclusion so that we have it in there. Um, they wish to help people to save their soul but they have to co cooperate with the graces that God would send and when they deny that when they don't 
respect this Holy See, when they attend to publications and publications of these heretics, and when they take it for granted that they claim to be Catholic and they think they are Catholic, instead of realizing that they practice non-Catholic religion or they belong to assemblies of heretics, and then they, they don't recognize the truth, and these heretics will never teach them the truth because they are evil trees bearing evil fruit. So God will allow them to fall into these horrible conclusions and so forth. You can plainly, when you listen to these people, like this person from the Philippines, you know by the very fact what he's concluding in that, in that doctrine, what he's trying to say, and that he accepted invitation of people who are evidently not really Catholic to begin with, and they take it upon themselves to decide these matters. There's one part in that vid in that video where those people are collecting donations right on, on their live stream. So and then they are allowing people to to ask questions and so forth. Some of them are horrible questions and dis dis truly disrespectful. And uh, they they smiling about it and so forth. So that's uh, uh, this in itself. God will repay because this is not permitted to members of the laity, no matter how much they claim to know or whatever to, 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 to do, period. As, as the rightful sovereign pontiff, we will never accept such invitation because that's derogating from our office and dignity. So obviously they no, they have to obey the church and follow what the church teaches. He who hear it, you hear it, me. Anyone who decides to go to such a gathering or to, to be participating in such uh, online discussion or answering questions and claims to be a pope is, is a fraud because the pope does not do interviews the pope teaches the truth of salvation we don't do interviews with members of non-catholic sects and and so forth the only way to teach them is from the pulpit and through these our publications and that's for the their safety of their soul so those who are catholic faithful they have to listen and obey in conscience what we teach because that comes by the assistance of the holy ghost who is with us who directs us what to say and what to say it and how to say it how to disclose it how to properly present the doctrine so that they are informed of the dangers that otherwise they would in, uh, encounter uh, if they don't obey it and how the devil attacks them and all this in our previous live stream we have made statement about mystical philosophy we want mystical theology we want to correct this in today's hour it's not it's not against uh, it's not uh, it was just a slip of the tongue but that's not intended anything like that we saw the video we have so little time to prepare for these things it's just truly today it was just absolutely impossible to uh, we've run out of time virtually so as we could include more we have more in uh, publications in it we could play the video of the excerpt of the list of heresies of these major heretics and these assemblies but we have illustrated this many times before so the SSPX what they do idolatry in their places the society of Empires the fifth the set of a contest what they say like this heretic Sanborn or Pivarunas what he says they one way or another were all tied with the novus of the sect on the other hand we had never ever anything to do with that sect so otherwise we wouldn't be Pope because that would exclude us from papacy as heretics by canon law, canon 2314. And by the very fact that canon exists, which is reserved to the judgment of the Holy See, to the rightful and true sovereign pontiff, that's the fact if the Cerebacontes were correct in their heretical conclusion and false doctrine, then the human race would be finished. The devil would be in complete control and that's impossible because there has to be always be one person who is protected against these attacks of the devil and that's the true pope and god preserved that that papacy because that is preserving his promise the gates of Oshana prevail against the church and behold i am with you all days even unto the consummation of the world if there was no pope the devil would be today based on the circumstances and the hist and, and truly the, the reality of the situation the devil would be completely in charge of the whole human race including the church and that's impossible to happen there's no such thing as set of accountism set of accountism as heresy we have condemned it as such and those who adhere to this horrible horrible doctrine are heretics excommunicated special reserved to our judgment to this holy apostolic see Pursuant Canon 2314, 1917, Code of Canon Law.
There's no excuse. No compromise possible. Faith comes first. So that should suffice today. And also pretend that the devil instituted this. That's why we suspect that this is the work of the Novzara sect. This person, speci specifically this person from the this Philippines, because he was tied with them. And he's got place where he goes and uh, how he obtained such a, it's, it looks like that's in that footage, how he obtained such a big place. He's got 200 people there, they go there, they dress scandalously, women without the veil, some of them in pants, some of them in shorts. This is horrifying display of sacrilege. He says all these horrible things, so that's that's not possible that such person would be in, in possession of the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And these laymen, these heretics who were formerly in Gugans and whatever, and they are not admitted into the church, they would have to abjure the heresy, would, be, would have to be examined whether they understand the faith. I mean, it's catechism of the Council of Trent, that's what we require. They would have to be conditionally baptized if they come from non Catholic sect, or even the Anglicans, we don't trust these, so that has to be done conditionally baptism to make sure that they truly obtain the, the sacrament, and they will have to be valid members of the church. And help the church to continue so it's not only this um, so abjuration of heresy there's a special ceremony that has to be done and no so we want to help people to be able to save their soul but when they decide that they will not believe it and that's the sign that the devil is in charge of their soul and that God is not helping them to recover because they offend him. They, he, our Lord foresees how they will react. That even if they saw miracles, that we would done, do some miracles that that uh, uh, God would do through us a miracle. Let us say, for the sake of argument, even then they would have, they would believe the miracle, but they would not not help the church to continue. And so God leaves them to their own misery. That's how serious the situation is. And because they don't hear our doctrine, they don't hear the truth of salvation, what we teach and uh, and define and and declare and so forth, regarding these heretics to avoid them, to have nothing to do with them and so forth. They are on their own. God will not help. That's how serious the situation is today. And that's why it's so important to strive after the sanctification of your soul, to trail and the faith, to be able to, uh, to stop going to places that are run by these heretics, which have, we have named sever your com complete contacts with these with these people who belong to this novice other sect because that's the danger of perversion is there and strive to be truly catholic and address the holy see and we'll see how we can help you and all this further that has to be done in individual cases other than that there's no salvation outside the holy mother church outside being subject to our authority there's no salvation and again it was not grant we didn't ask for it we don't particularly like to have it to begin with because it's it's and now it's heavy cross the holy father will have much to suffer it's our lady of fatima said and that's fulfilled in our person because this is it's truly extremely difficult and uh, we have to endure hardships and so forth and denial of uh, by these heretics who we don't want to be recognized by heretics to begin with so because they are heretics outside the church and so But we have to fulfill our obligation and duty of our apostolic office, and we do fulfill it. But it is difficult to, when God does not help people to convert, because he sees how they are, how they treat his church, how they deny his church, how they deny his vicar, our person at present time, uh, how they take it upon themselves to decide what they will believe or not believe, how they will lead their lives, which many times are sinful, and their conduct is not sanctification, sanctification of their soul. And they lead themselves into the hands of the devil. The devil holds them as slaves. And God will not, will not help them to recover because they offend him. They don't want to be truly Catholic. And that's the point. And that's precisely the reason why not, there are no conversions at this point. Of course, that doesn't say the devil, that there will not be conversions, but... At this, at this time, there's no conversion. And for this particular reason, this exact reason, that people offend God, and God is not helping them to recover. And for that, we pray that people convert and amend that they become truly Catholic. We would like to take care of more people to help them to save their soul out of charity. First and foremost, out of charity to our Lord. 
and the fulfill all obligation on a duty of or apostolic office. But that's up to God. Conversion from heresy is truly a gift of God, immense gift of God. And only very few obtain it because if they don't cooperate with the graces that God sends them, that they are on their own, God will leave them to their own misery. And at the end, they will pay for it, for their obstinate refusal to be truly Catholic in hell. That's how serious the situation is. That should suffice today.